Hey everybody, it's Lisa with Quilting in the Valley and since we are all in lockdown and not having a lot of fun with that, I thought we would take a few minutes and talk about Bernina machines and some of the error messages and troubleshooting and issues you may be having with them. You may be able to diagnose yourself. So let's start. First thing is, this is very, very common. People will call and say, my machine's making this buzzing noise, this terrible, turn your bobbin winder off. <laughs> That's an easy one. Uh, the next thing, and this is unbelievably common, we try to avoid this because we take these off before we deliver these machines to people. But on the back of your machine, on all of your feet, you've got this tiny little screw that comes installed on them when you get them. And you're gonna put this tiny little screw and your foot on the back of the machine. And the vibration over time is gonna cause that to happen. And then you're gonna freak out because you're gonna, a screw just fell out on my machine. No, it didn't. It came off the back of your foot. So when you see a screw that looks like that, that falls onto the bed of your sewing machine, it came off the back of your foot. Just put it in the drawer and don't think about it anymore. It's not a big deal. If you'll look up underneath this sewing machine, you'll see there's no place for a screw to fall out. So you're, you're fine. Nothing fell out of your machine. Okay. Let's talk about the dreaded 1010 error message. So it locks up and a lot of times your flywheel, so this thing, will be really tight and you can't turn it. You know what that is? That's a bobbin problem. So anytime it says 1010 error message, main sink failure, it does not mean that your machine is broken. It does not mean you've done anything to it. It just means that your hook is not seated properly. So what you're gonna do, the very first minute you get that 1010 main sink error, you're gonna come in here you're gonna take out that bobbin. You're gonna take out that hook. And there's your hook. Take everything out. And then you're gonna get down in here and you're gonna look, you see right there? That little thing right there and that little thing right there. These two little silver things, that and that. You're gonna make sure there's no thread wound up around those, nothing tied in there. Clean all that out of there, make sure there's no threads or goobers caught up in there anywhere, okay? And then, since you got your hook out anyway, you're gonna do your maintenance, you're gonna do your oiling. So you're gonna take your little oil thing and you're gonna go bloop and bloop right on those two little felt pads then you're gonna come in here and you're gonna go right there, right where I just put that drop of oil, right there, where's the race. Just because you're in here already and you may as well save yourself the time later, huh? Okay, then you're gonna put your hook in. Now there's a lot of videos out there about laying your hook like that and flipping it up in there. That is easier it is also more likely to get your hook in upside down. So learn how to do it the right way. Those two little bars that I was pointing at before, <laughs> you can't get in there. Those two little bars and these two things on the back of your hook line up. This part of your hook, the hook part, needs to be up. So your foot should be in the upright position. Your needle should be in the upright position. That puts those little guys in there at about 10 and four o'clock. Okay, they should be in there right about 10 and four o'clock. So then you're gonna make sure these are in at about 10 and four o'clock. You're gonna hold on to the post, slide the butt in first, and then just use your fingers until you feel the magnet pull it into place. Close the ring. If the ring does not close easily, if you have to force that to close, take your hook back out, 
and put it in again. It should just snap into place. You shouldn't have to to get that to close. It should just snap into place. One more check that you can do to make sure your hook is in in the right position is just reach over here and rotate your flywheel all the way around and make sure that it goes around like it's supposed to and everything's copacetic, okay? Easy peasy. And then your bobbin pops right back in. Okay, now, what if your screen freezes? It won't let me do anything. Boop, boop, boop. I can't change anything. Oh, no, it won't let me do anything. I could actually make that happen if I wanted to. What happens is you've brushed up against too many things, you touch too many things too quickly, and the screen goes, mm, I don't know what you want me to do. I quit. Okay? And it'll just freeze, and you can't touch anything else. Here's what you do. You're going to turn your machine off. You're going to take two fingers, and you're going to hold this in both sides at the same time. Then you're gonna turn your machine on. And you're gonna wait and it's gonna make its Bernina burp and then the screen is gonna come up in just a sec here. There it goes. I'm holding my buttons in. It's making its noise. La da la da la da. Any minute now. There we go. And you're gonna get that screen. Okay, and that screen, you're gonna do exactly what it says. You're going to take your stylus, which I didn't get out. You take your stylus and you're gonna do exactly what it says. Touch it, touch it, and touch it. And that recalibrates your screen and now your screen is gonna be reactive to you again. So easy peasy fix, not gonna cause any issues, okay. Let's talk about your bobbin thread warnings, low bobbin thread warnings. If you keep getting that you're out of bobbin thread, you're out of bobbin thread, you're out of bobbin thread, you're out of bobbin thread. Make sure you've closed your bobbin door. Okay, you have got a sensor in here, this part right here. And if it's pointing up into dead space, it says, hey, there's no bobbin. Hey, you can't sew, there's no bobbin. I cannot tell you how many times I have gone to, because I keep my tape machine is in a table and it's underneath. I'll go change everything underneath and then go to sew and I've forgotten to close the bobbin door. So first, make sure your bobbin door is closed. Second, if it still says that you have no bobbin, what you probably has is, is has have is a tiny little piece of fluff in there somewhere. So you've got a broken or a cut piece of fabric in there somewhere rotating around in there. You just need to clean till you can find it. Use a nice long bristle, natural bristle brush like this. Dig, get in there and dig that out of there. There's something in there that's causing your bobbin sensor to go, hey, I'm out, okay? Same thing can happen up in here. So if you're getting a top thread issue, saying your top thread's broken and it's not, it's because it's come out of the tension discs or it's come out of a thread guide somewhere. So the thing to do with that is just save yourself some time and struggle, cut it, pull it through, and re-thread. When you're re-threading, make sure you're holding on both sides. See how my hands are on both sides of this thread? Come down, I'm putting tension on this thread. My foot is up, so my tension discs are open, and I'm making sure that everything is laying where it's supposed to. Come down, and now you're gonna get to that part that everybody struggles with, which is using your threader. This is not difficult. Go ahead and push it down. Come under that little guy. Come over here, and hold lightly with your right hand. You see how I could just feel when it caught? Do that again. Let me unthread it so you can see that. So I'm coming down, going around that little post. I'm going across the needle eye into this little V on the side. I'm 
pushing all the way down with my left hand. I'm holding very lightly with my right hand. Oops. And there it goes. And you can see it. If you watch right in that eye, you can see when the hook pulls that thread through. So just keep pushing it down until you see the hook pull it. Okay, that is our most common things that happen with the jumbo bobbin machines is that 1010 main sink error, hook problem, or your top thread, your auto top thread, threading issue, or your screen's frozen, you touch too many things too quickly, or the buzzing sound, or the screw that fell out. <laughs> So those are our top 10 issues. Um, if you continue to have issues with your thread sensor saying you have top thread that's not threaded, you can go in and turn that off. Here's how you do that. Until You wanna get it looked at, but until you do. You're gonna go in here and see that little eyeball? That's your top thread, turn it off. That's your bobbin sensor, you can turn it off. I would not recommend running it for long periods of time and just never having that looked at because you may have something caught up in your tension disc that's gonna cause you some tension issues. But if you can't get to the shop right now and you can't fix that, you're gonna to go to settings, the little eyeball, and either turn your top or your bobbin sensor off until you can get it into the shop where they can dig in there and find that little piece of thread that's causing you issues wherever it is. Okay, that's our tips for top things that go wrong that people don't know how to fix. They're no big deal, you can fix it, no big deal. Talk to you guys later.